Uh, welcome back. Uh, in today's uh, lecture, we will be looking at uh, some experimental design strategies. The references uh, for this lecture uh, are uh, the book written by Mayers, Montgomery, Anderson, Cook, Response Surface Methodology, Process and Product Optimization Using Designed Experiments, 3rd edition, John Wiley and Sons, New York, 2009. You may also want to refer to Montgomery uh, Design and Analysis of Experiments, 7th uh, edition, uh, John Wiley and Sons, New York. The uh, importance of central composite design uh, will be uh, stressed upon in this lecture. It is a very popular second order design used widely in both research and in industry. Three levels are uh, employed and uh, there are some features like uh, rotatability and uh, good uh, prediction uh, variance properties. The central composite design enables the development of second order model and uh, incorporates curvature. What is meant by a second order model? So far we have been looking at uh, the uh, main factors and the interaction between the factors. When you want to uh, expand uh, in the model space, the uh, response uh, may show curvature and in a multidimensional uh, coordinate system, you will uh, have the response surface in the form of a uh, three dimensional surface. And uh, to describe such kind of uh, response surfaces, we need higher order terms in the model equation, second order terms like uh, x1 squared, x2 squared. Usually, uh, we do not go for uh, models uh, higher than second order unless it is uh, absolutely essential. So, let us see uh, how we may develop the second order model uh, using the central composite design approach. This is also used in uh, uh, response surface methodology designs when searching for the optimum. So, why do we uh, emphasize so much on second order models? Uh, the experimental design space, uh, the response surface is no longer planar, but uh, may be marked by peaks and or valleys. Second order models are required to estimate this response and enable the identification of optimum solution if any. Second order models of or of the form y is equal to beta naught plus uh, i equals 1 to k beta i x i sigma i sigma j beta i j x i x j plus uh, sigma i equals 1 to k beta i i x i squared and so on. So, this is the main factors and this is the interaction binary interaction between two factors taken uh, at a time and then you have the uh, second order terms uh, x 1 squared x 2 squared and so on. This is of course, the error term. So, when you want to fit a model, you fit uh, one intercept and uh, k main factors, k c 2 uh, binary interactions and uh, k second order terms. So, that would be 1 plus 2 k plus uh, k into k minus 1 by 2 parameters. If k is equal to uh, 2, you will uh, have uh, 1 plus 4 5 and then 2 into uh, 2 by 2 is 1 that would be uh, 6 parameters totally you have to estimate. So, th those would be beta naught, beta 1, beta 2 that makes it 3 and then one interaction term x 1 x 2 that makes it uh, 4 and then x 1 squared and x 2 squared coefficients that makes it 6. So, when we go for uh, central composite designs, we are no longer able to retain the orthogonal uh, property and uh, we shift our attention from the orthogonal uh, property advantages to the uh, uh, 
suitable uh, low values of the scaled prediction variance. So, when we develop a second order model, we are very worried about its prediction capability and we want to uh, make the uh, variance in the predicted response as low as possible. So, what would be the suitable design strategy which will bring down the uh, scaled prediction variance is our goal. What is the structure of the central composite design? So, we add a central and a 2 k axial or star points to a 2 factorial design. So, let us take a simple case of a 2 factorial design first we add center points, we have already seen the center points uh, at the geometric center of the design space. They were used to uh, not only get an idea about the experimental error, uh, but also uh, regarding the uh, significance of the curvature in the response. And then on top of the center points, we also add uh, points along the axis. For a two factorial design, we have two axes, the x and y axis or x1 and x2 axis and uh, you put uh, certain points at select locations on the axis. On each axis, you put one pair of points uh, symmetrically. So, when each axis uh, contains one pair of points for a two factor design involving two axes x1 and x2, we will have four axial points totally or two pairs of axial points. So, the design compresses of uh, 2 power k factorial points, uh, the ones which are located at minus 1, plus 1 and so on, n c center points and 2 k axial points. So, the center points enable the identification of curvature in the system. If curvature evidence is irrefutable uh, from a t test or uh, a suitable test, the axial points enable the efficient identification of the pure quadratic terms. So, each uh, point uh, in the central composite design uh, has its own uh, significance. So, what is the central composite design uh, uh, when looking at it pictorially? You have a central composite design shown here for uh, two factors. These are the uh, points uh, in the uh, experimental space as usual uh, the 2 power 2 factorial design has 4 uh, corner points each located at uh, minus 1 and uh, plus 1. So, this would be minus 1 1 uh, 1 1 1 minus 1 and minus 1 minus 1 the usual factorial design and this is the center points you can have more than one center point. And then what is unique about the central composite design when the from the regular factorial design is the presence of the axis or star points. You can see that each axis, this is the x 1 axis is having 2 points uh, located at uh, 1.414 and minus 1.414. Similarly, you have uh, 2 points located on the y axis or x 2 axis and they are also located at uh, 0 1.414 and 0 minus 1.414. So, the factorial points belong to the orthogonal and variance optimal class of designs and uh, these enable the identification of the main effects. The factorial design we saw comprised of points which were located on the uh, extremes of the design space for that particular design minus 1 and plus 1 and since the points were located at uh, very far off uh, positions you can visualize that the uh, x prime x inverse matrix would be uh, uh, x prime x inverse matrix would be pretty small and that would uh, reduce the variance of the predictions and hence uh, it was termed as an variance optimal design. The factorial points are uh, used to find uh, the main effects and the interactions. You find the main effects and the interactions in exactly the same way as you did for the uh, regular factorial design. The center points also enable the estimation of the pure error as they represent repeats. So, uh, you need at least uh, 2 or more uh, repeat points and rather than uh, repeating the uh, experiments uh, at all the uh, factorial points, you may want to uh, do the repeats at the geometric center. By this way, you can get an idea about the experimental error and also uh, you can save time on doing the experiments at the uh, corners of the factorial design. Of course, that would lead to more number of runs, but in some cases that may be inevitable 
for the simple reason that uh, certain uh, research requirements uh, require the reporting of the uh, experimental measurements uh, averaged over triplicates. So, the center points uh, in other cases are uh, helpful to find the experimental error, but in addition to this they also have another uh, utility. The central points also help in the detection of the second order or curvature effects, but do not help in their explicit uh, individual estimation. Center points also give us a hint on whether uh, curvature effects are important or not and uh, they tell that uh, whether the curvature is significant, okay, but it does not help us to explicitly uh, uh, quantify the curvature. It only indicates uh, whether curvature should be considered in the model or not. So, in order to identify the curvature effects explicitly we require the axial points. Why should the axial points be uh, located at uh, minus root 2 or minus 1.414 and uh, plus root 2 or plus 1.414? The answer to this, to this would be uh, given shortly. So, the axial points contribute to the estimation of the individual pure quadratic effects significance and if the axial points were not present only the sum of the quadratic term significance could be gauged using the center points. And the axial points do not contribute to the estimation of the interaction effects. The central points and the axial points contribute to the flexibility of the central composite design. So, by adding the new uh, central points and axial points which are uh, variants or uh, enhancements to the regular factorial design, we make the experimental design uh, more flexible. And uh, so, where do we exactly uh, locate the axial points is the next question. Uh, it depends upon the region of interest in the experimental space and uh, the number of central points determine uh, the distribution of the scale, the prediction variance in the region of interest. So, the location of the axial points depend on the region of interest in the experimental space and the number of central points determine the uh, distribution of the scaled prediction variance in the region of interest. This is a very important uh, statement because we want to uh, have our uh, model uh, predict uh, uniformly as much as possible in the entire uh, design space. Uh, if the uh, variability in the prediction is unmanageably uh, high in our uh, design space, then the model's utility is uh, reduced. It is not enough if the model predicts well uh, in the center of the uh, region uh, or in the center of the geometric uh, uh, design space, the geometric center of the design space, uh, but also as we move away from it uh, as we approach the uh, edges of the design space, we want the variability in the predictions uh, to be kept uh, as low as minimum. Uh, because we normally uh, want to predict uh, the uh, response of the experiment uh, at points uh, uh, further and further away from the geometric center. We may want to even extrapolate sometimes the experimental response uh, beyond uh, the uh, factorial points. In such cases, if the variance in the predictions keep uh, increasing, then uh, the utility of the model is lost. So, planning for this, we should uh, see what should be the appropriate uh, design strategy and uh, we should also consider parameters like number of center points that would uh, reduce or minimize the uh, scaled prediction variance. And an important thing to note here is uh, when you are planning the design strategy, you do not need the experimental uh, data explicitly. You can find the scaled prediction variance uh, uh, even before you carry out the experiments and see whether uh, for the uh, experimental strategy you have adopted, the scaled uh, prediction variance is uh, manageable and is acceptable. So, what we uh, do is uh, we add central and the 2k axial or star points to a 2 power k factorial design. Suppose you have a central composite design with 3 factors, then you locate the axial points at uh, plus or minus alpha 0 comma 0, 
0 plus or minus alpha comma 0 and uh, 0 comma 0 comma plus or minus alpha. How to determine the alpha is an important uh, question, we will answer it uh, shortly. So, the design comprises of uh, 2 power k regular factorial points, n c center points and 2 k axial points. So, let us look at the mini tab output for a central composite design involving 3 factors. You can see the 3 factors are uh, represented by x 1, x 2, x 3 here and uh, then the first 8 experiments are the uh, regular factorial uh, design points. Uh, you can see minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, so on. Then the 8th one is 1, 1, 1. Then you have uh, these axial points uh, minus alpha 0, comma 0, plus alpha 0, comma 0, 0, minus alpha 0, 0, plus alpha 0, 0, 0, minus alpha, 0, 0, plus alpha, where alpha is 1.68179. Uh, what is that special magic number? We have to see shortly. And then you have as many as uh, 6 uh, repeated points at the geometric center of the design. So, let us uh, estimate the model coefficients uh, which are in uh, uh, associated with data that are in coded units. we have to estimate the uh, model coefficients for the experimental data that are in coded units. So, we have to inter, uh, estimate the intercept, main factors, binary interactions and quadratic effects only. So, in addition to the uh, intercept beta naught, we need to estimate the main factors uh, coefficients, uh, the coefficients associated with the uh, x 1, x 2 and x 3. Then we have to identify the binary coefficients associated with the x 1, x 2, x 1, x 3, x 2, x 3 and uh, then we also have to find uh, coefficients associated with x 1 squared, x 2 squared and x 3 squared. So, the total number of uh, design points is 20 for a 3 factor design with 6 repeats. So, you can see that there are 20 uh, uh, independent experimental uh, settings that is not correct. It is not uh, 20 independent uh, experimental settings. You have uh, uh, 14 independent experimental settings and then even though you have 6 uh, repeats that will constitute only 1 independent uh, experimental setting. So, that would mean 14 plus 1, 15 uh, independent experimental settings are there. So, you have uh, total number of design points as 20 the degrees of freedom for model is uh, 19 uh, excluding the intercept and uh, total number of uh, regression coefficients uh, estimated each with the degree of freedom is uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3 that is equal to uh, 9. The remaining degrees of freedom is uh, 10. So, the number of center points is 6 lack of uh, degrees of freedom for pure error is uh, 6 minus 1 which is equal to 5. So, lack of fit uh, degrees of freedom is equal to 5. So, this is a very interesting uh, calculation for the degrees of freedom for lack of fit. So, even though we have uh, fitted uh, uh, 1, 4, 4 plus 3, 7, 7 plus 3, uh, 10 uh, parameters. Uh, the uh, model uh, possibilities are not exhausted. So, there are uh, still some, uh, uh, there is still some scope for expanding the model and adding uh, uh, more coefficients. What can be the number of coefficients that can be further added to the model uh, has to be first uh, estimated. So, if you look at the uh, model, uh, you are having uh, 20 uh, uh, experimental settings, but uh, out of that you are having uh, 14 uh, uh, central composite design points, the factorial points and the axial points that would be 8 plus 6, because you have uh, for a 3 uh, uh, 
uh, factors uh, two factorial design you are having eight factorial points and uh, for uh, three axis you are having six uh, axial points. So, that makes it 8 plus 6 14 and then you are having uh, six uh, center points, but uh, the center points uh, are uh, repeats only that means uh, that would constitute uh, only one uh, independent data setting. So, tot in total we have something like uh, 14 plus 1 which is 15 independent uh, experimental settings. And if we have already estimated uh, 10 parameters and there are 15 independent experimental settings, we can quickly say that uh, we can additionally estimate 5 more parameters to the model. That may not be really necessary, but it gives us the option of adding another 5 parameters to the model because of process knowledge and prior experience there may be some unusual terms like uh, x1 x2 squared or x2 squared uh, uh, x3 these kind of uh, terms may have to be added to the model because of the peculiarities of the process and uh, then you may need to uh, identify the coefficients associated with those uh, variable combinations hence we have uh, 5 uh, more degrees of freedom for fitting additional model parameters and this is nothing but the lack of fit uh, degrees of freedom. Sometimes uh, even with 10 parameters there may be scope for model uh, development and so uh, the analysis of variance table would indicate that uh, the lack of fit degrees of freedom is significant and hence we may have to consider adding of more terms to the model. So, the lack of fit degrees of freedom is 5 as we uh, discussed uh, just now. So, we can fit additionally 5 more uh, regression coefficients uh, after expanding the model appropriately without the risk of aliasing. And uh, now, the distribution of experimental design points has a profound uh, influence on the scaled prediction variance. Okay. So, Recall that the model developed is expected to uh, fit the experimental data properly in the design space. The uh, SPV is a measure of how well the data is fitted by the model. So, uh, these concepts are very uh, interesting for the simple reason uh, that uh, these are uh, over and above what we usually uh, are aware of in uh, experimental design. Uh, there are uh, with numerous instances of uh, citing of central composite designs in research papers and they get the justification that they are being mainly meant for uh, considering the second order terms in the model. But uh, many of these uh, papers uh, uh, do not uh, discuss further uh, as to why the central composite design was chosen among uh, different options available and uh, how is how good is the prediction capability of the model developed uh, using the central composite design. So, these are probably beyond the scope of uh, the particular research article, but it is very important for us uh, as data analysts and uh, researchers to assess the uh, quality of the developed model, how good the model is and uh, it is also good to be informed about the uh, limitations of the model uh, in the design space. Uh, one important indicator of the limitation of the model in the experimental design space is the scaled prediction variance and that is the reason why we are harping on it for uh, so many slides. In some cases the model may get frayed at the edges so that uh, the scaled prediction variance may be uh, very high at the boundaries. Even though the scaled prediction variance may look uh, manageable in the interior portion of the experimental design space, as we go further towards the extremes or the boundaries of the experimental design space, the uh, scaled prediction variance may shoot up uh, very uh, alarmingly and uh, then the model is not very good at the edges of the design space. In certain cases there may be uh, problems even at the center of the experimental design space, the scaled prediction variance may be high at the center of the design space as well and uh, hence uh, to keep it down or control it we need to increase the number of center points in certain designs. 
So, the scaled prediction variance uh, if you recollect is given by uh, SPV of x is equal to n which is the size of the experimental run. The total number of runs in the experiment is n variance of uh, y hat x divided by sigma squared and uh, by doing so we are uh, making the uh, prediction variance independent of sigma squared which we do not know anyway. So, we are also uh, getting rid of sigma squared and we are also uh, scaling the design for the size. Certain designs uh, which are uh, having large number of uh, uh, observations may artificially bring down the uh, prediction variance uh, because of the large size of the runs. To account for that uh, or to normalize for this effect we are multiplying by the term n. Uh, as an example, if an experiment is performed with large number of repeats, let us say 20 experiments have been uh, or let us say 25 experiments have been performed with large uh, number of repeats, the prediction variance in such a case uh, would be lower than another experiment where the exp uh, number of uh, runs was only restricted to 20. So, to uh, compensate or uh, account for the size of the run, we multiply by n. And uh, so, the prediction variance which is uh, multiplied by n and then divided by sigma squared is termed as the scaled prediction variance. And we have already seen how to determine the scaled prediction variance. Uh, we use x prime x inverse matrix and we also uh, take the coordinate at which we want to estimate the uh, scaled prediction variance and expand it to model space as was discussed in one of the previous lectures. We introduce at this point uh, the moment matrix M which is defined as uh, M is equal to x prime x by n. We saw that the variance covariance matrix is given by x prime x inverse sigma squared. So, the x prime x inverse uh, or the x prime x matrix is a very very important uh, term uh, because it captures the essence of your experimental design. Whatever uh, design strategy you are implementing is present in the x prime x matrix and the inversion of that matrix helps us not only to determine the uh, coefficients of the model proposed, but also the variability in the uh, model coefficients and also the variability in the uh, process response. So, these uh, are very significant in uh, experimental design analysis, uh, experimental data analysis and linear regression. And uh, in such a context, the x prime x uh, matrix uh, assumes the center stage. So, what is the moment matrix? It is x prime x divided by n. For a first order factorial design of order uh, k with the that means k parameters, the moment matrix is identified with an identity matrix of size k by k. Suppose you are having uh, the order as k, the uh, identity matrix would be having order of uh, k by k. So, let us uh, now look at uh, the second order models more closely. Uh, we define the moment matrix M as x prime x by n. For a first order factorial design of order P, uh, the moment matrix is the identity matrix of size or dimensions p by p. We recollect that p is equal to k plus 1, where uh, k is the uh, number of uh, uh, regression uh, coefficients uh, beta hat 1, beta hat 2 and so on to beta hat k in addition to the uh, intercept beta hat naught. So, we are having uh, uh, p is equal to k plus 1. Uh, uh, regression coefficients. So, the uh, x prime x matrix will also have dimensions of p by p and uh, the uh, moment matrix x prime x by n would be uh, an identity matrix. The uh, x prime x matrix uh, uh, for a first uh, order factorial design would be a diagonal matrix. And when you scale this diagonal matrix by uh, the total number of runs, 
we get an identity matrix uh, of uh, dimension p by p. That is demonstrated here and uh, we are having the x matrix which is given by uh, 1 a b c a b b c a c the 3 uh, binary interactions and then you have the ternary interaction a b c. So, this is the x matrix and uh, this is the uh, column of 1s and this is the column containing minus 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 and so on. Uh, so, we have the entire x matrix to generate a b we just simply multiply the elements of the a and b column vectors similarly for b c and uh, a c and so on and then you also have a b c which is uh, 1 uh, because it is minus 1 into minus 1 which is plus 1 1 into 1 is 1 and so when we uh, do m is equal to x prime x by n we take the transpose of the x matrix and uh, we then multiply with the x matrix again and then divide it by the uh, number of settings n in this case is equal to 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and when we do that the x prime x matrix would be a diagonal matrix having 8 8 8 and all that, but when you divide it by 8 then it becomes an identity matrix of dimension 8 by 8. So, very interesting. So, now let us uh, define the different uh, moments. You have the first moments uh, uh, represented by uh, i and that is given by 1 by n sigma u is equal to 1 up to n x i u. Okay, u is the index for uh, incrementing from 1 to n and i refers to the uh, i th uh, column or the i th model parameter. Uh, for example, if you look at this particular uh, column, if we are talking about x 1 u, then we uh, take this column corresponding to all 1s in the first index and then u is running from 1 to n. So, we go from x 1 1, x 1 2, so on to x 1 n. So, the simple thing to note here is we are referring to the ith column and summing over the uh, elements present in the ith column. So, and that summation is carried over all the experimental settings in the uh, data set. And when you look at the second uh, pure moments, we have uh, uh, no adulteration of i with j and vice versa, i is present with i and since uh, it is uh, present as a couple, uh, it is a second uh, pure moment. And how do we find that? We take the square of uh, the uh, column elements we are choosing. Suppose uh, we have chosen uh, bracket uh, i i close bracket corresponding to the third column, then it would be we will go to the third column in this x matrix and then we will do uh, x uh, x 3 1 squared x 3 2 squared so on to x 3 n squared in this matrix if i were to be 3. When you have second mixed moments uh, the uh, uh, column vectors we are considering are different from each other we are conduct uh, we are considering two column vectors and uh, in these two column vectors i and j are different and uh, so we multiply the individual corresponding elements in each column vector. So, that we get uh, second mixed moment uh, this i and j, i is not equal to j, i and j are different and hence it is called as a mixed moment and uh, that we do 1 by n sigma u is equal to 1 to n x i u into x j u. So, we also have the third pure moment i, i and i which is uh, since it is pure there is no uh, uh, additional or a different term in the moment consideration. It is i i and i that means uh, 1 by n sigma u is equal to 1 to n x 
cube i u. So, for the i th uh, column vector we just take the cube of each element in that particular column vector and then sum it up, sum it up over all the experimental settings. And similarly, we can have all these uh, other moments also, third mixed moment, the total order of the moment is uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is 3 and uh, mixed moments means there can be elements uh, which are different from one another. You can have two same elements and uh, then you can have a different uh, element j. So, this i's uh, and j's obviously uh, refer to uh, the i-th uh, column and the j-th column in the uh, moment matrix. So, we have 1 by n uh, sigma u is equal to 1 to n uh, x uh, squared i u and x j u. Okay, a correction at this point, uh, these do not refer to elements in the uh, uh, moment matrix, they are referring to the elements uh, and uh, column vectors in the x matrix. Okay. We use the elements in the uh, x matrix, we use the column vectors in the x matrix to find uh, the different moments. And uh, if you look at the third mixed moment i j k, it is 1 by n sigma u is equal to 1 to n x i u, x j u, x k u. Fourth pure moments are also possible, where we take the fourth power of uh, the uh, elements in the ith column vector and then sum it over the n experimental settings. Fourth mixed moments uh, would be the presence of uh, different uh, elements, uh, even i squared j squared is considered as a fourth mixed moment even though you are having uh, two of a species or two of a certain type together and uh, that is let us say i i is present together and j j is present together, but since i and j are different uh, we term it as a fourth uh, order mixed moment and that would be given by 1 by n sigma u is equal to 1 to n x squared i u x squared j u. So, you can also have uh, i j k l where all the uh, elements uh, within the brackets are different. So, they obviously refer to uh, different uh, columns, the ith column, jth column, kth column and lth column uh, in the x matrix and all the i's j k and l are different from one another. Here we have the case of i squared j k the elements again are being different from each other and hence it is called as a mixed moment. So, for a first order uh, design, a factorial design, uh, the first moment for any i is uh, 0. So, when you are looking at the x matrix, if you look at any column, uh, we are not having columns uh, with the contributions from uh, x uh, i squared like x 1 squared or x 2 squared. So, all the elements in the x matrix for this case uh, would be comprising of uh, minus 1, plus 1 and so on, except for the uh, vector of 1s all other uh, columns would be having uh, minus 1 and plus 1 and when you total it up for each column it will become 0. Uh, for example, if you look at the main uh, fx x1 or x2 or x3, each column would be having uh, minus 1 and plus 1 in equal number and so when you take the uh, sum, it will go to 0 and that is what is meant by the first moment for any i is equal to 0 for the first order design. And uh, the second pure moment is unity, you may ask how it is possible. The second pure moment is either i squared or j squared and so each uh, of the minus 1 or plus 1 will uniformly become plus 1 only after squaring. So, when you are having let us say 8 runs, uh, you are going to have the sum as 8, but uh, please remember according to the definition of the second moment we are uh, or for that matter any moment we are dividing by n. So, 
that 8 will get cancelled with the 8 and hence you will get 1. So, you can see the second pure moment is having 1 by n here sigma u is equal to 1 to n x i squared x squared i u and so all these things would be uh, once and you are adding it up to n times means you will get n and n by n would be equal to 1. The second pure moment is uh, unity that is what we saw just now because we are dividing all the uh, squared elements with uh, the size of the run and so they cancel out and the resulting answer is just 1. The first moment is analogous to the sample mean and the second moment is analogous to the sample variance and this mixed moment is analogous to the sample covariance. For a first order design the moments are up to order 2 and for a first order design the first and second mixed moments also called as odd moments at least one variable with odd power are 0. So, the odd moments are 0 for a first order uh, design. The second pure moment called as even moments are equal to 1 for the first order design. So, now let us look at a saturated 2 power 3 factorial design x matrix. So, you are having typical pure and uh, mixed uh, moments for a 2 power 3 design x matrix and uh, so you see that uh, the x matrix is having the usual uh, column of ones it is having the column of a b c the main factors a b b c a c the interactions a b c uh, which is the uh, uh, ternary uh, interaction and uh, then you also have b into a b c squared. So, all these things are uh, created very easily for example, the column b a b or b squared a is created by squaring b squared uh, sorry by squaring b. So, you will these uh, values will all become 1 and then multiplying with a. So, when you get b squared a 1 into minus 1 will be minus 1 and similarly b squared will be 1 and uh, a would be 1 and so you are having plus 1. Similarly, you can find out c squared and uh, b squared uh, a would be a third order moment third order mixed moment because uh, a is also present here. And when you look at uh, the first order moments corresponding to the main factors when I am totaling all these values it becomes 0. And if I am even looking at b squared a b it is also equal to 0 because it is having equal number of minuses and plus here. But when I do c squared it becomes uh, 1 throughout the column and when I add it up uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 it becomes 8 and the size of the run is also equal to 8, 8 by 8 will be equal to 1 and that is why you have 1 here. For a central composite design it can be shown that the moments are carried over up to order 4 and uh, let us take the design matrix for the central composite design and uh, use it to investigate the values of the different moments. So, for the uh, central composite design uh, we can look at uh, the values uh, taken by different uh, moments uh, all odd moments through order 4 that means uh, orders 1, 2 and 3 are also included it says that is why through order 4 that is the moments that contain at least one uh, odd power like uh, i or uh, i cube or i squared j. Uh, so, there is at least uh, one odd power corresponding to the power of j and then i j k and this is all completely odd moments because i is different from j and j is different from k and i cube j and i squared j k are 0 for i is not equal to j not equal to k. So, the tables are shown in the next slide as examples. So, in this design it may be usually visualized that only non-zero moments uh, for k is equal to 3 are uh, 
i squared i squared j squared or i to the power of 4 for all i not equal to j. So, we will uh, continue on this uh, topic uh, after taking a break.